All right, so let's take a look at where we left off yesterday just briefly. We just barely started the exam class. Um, but the one thing we really focused on with the exam class is that an exam has a list of questions. An exam um, has a collection of questions. An exam is not a question. And that sounds weird that like I'm making a big deal of this. If we had done this in our previous unit on array lists, and I asked you to write an exam class that has an array list of questions, you wouldn't have thought twice about it. You would have written exactly this code. It would have been no problem. But now that we're starting to think about inheritance, we want to make everything extend everything else, and we run into these issues. So just remember, when you're writing a new class, ask yourself the question, does this, you know, does an exam have a list of questions? Or is an exam a question? Which of those makes sense? Which one, which one of those questions doesn't sound right? That will help you in your, in your definition. Um, all right, so as we look at this, we've got our instance variable, which is our array list of questions. We're just going to write a few methods here together. Um, I'm not going to bother with the Java docs um, just in the interest of time, and this is going to be a really simple class. Um, like I said, we could have written this in our previous unit as well. So let's write, write it. We have a, an instance variable that's going to reference an array list. So let's have a constructor that actually creates a new array list. So public exam, there's our constructor. All that we have to initialize is the instance variable questions. And we'll say we want a new array list that references question objects. So now we'll have an actual array list object. It won't we don't have any elements yet, but that's fine. Right now the exam is going to start off being empty. We need two more methods to pull this off. One method we need is so the user is able to add questions to the exam. So we'll create a method um, with no return type, void return type, called add question. It takes a single parameter of type question. And all we have to do is add that question to our array list. So it's nice to get a little bit more practice with array lists as we work through this example. Please do note that the add question method has a single parameter of type question. Um, you're not adding, um, it's not of a fill-in question, it's not a choice question, it's just a question. Um, because an exam doesn't care, nor does it need to know what specific types of questions are on the test. It just has a list of questions. So, so that gets us started with that. And we need one more method. We need a method to actually administer the exam, that is to ask the questions. So we'll create another method called ask questions. And in this method, we'll like prompt, we'll display one question at a time, we'll prompt the user for the answer, we'll check the answer and we'll move on from, from there. So let's create a new scanner object to do this to, to prompt the user. So we're going to create a new scanner that will read from the terminal. So we'll specify system.in. And then we need to basically iterate through every question in this exam. Um, we don't need to change the values in the array list. So an enhanced for loop is a convenient and appropriate way to write our loop. So for question Q in questions, that will iterate through every question in the array list, assign each reference to Q. First we say system.out.println, and we print the question. Um, please do remember that when we pass a reference to an object to the println method, it will automatically call the toString method. Um, so we don't need to say q.toString, that will happen automatically, um, so that's convenient. So that will print the question text. So now we need to prompt the user for their answer. So let's do a system out print, just like we usually do. We'll say your answer, colon space, and then we'll do in.nextLine to read whatever their answer is, and we'll store it in the variable response. And then we'll actually print whether they're right or wrong. 
And we'll do that by calling the check answer method on the question and passing along their response. The check answer method returns either it returns a boolean, either true or false. So we're simply going to print true or false, but that's fine. It's, they get immediate feedback on whether they have the question right or wrong. To be clear, there's nothing new in this exam class. Like I said, we could have written this in the previous unit when we were learning about array lists. Um, and that's actually important because that gets at part of this whole concept of polymorphism. This class doesn't know anything about the subclasses of question. All it knows about is question, the only methods it calls. It's calling to string here implicitly. It's calling check answer here. Those are the methods that are defined um, in the question superclass. So, a picture that I think would be helpful is if we go back to the BlueJ project, we can visually see that the exam cl class is dependent on the question class. We see that dashed arrow that BlueJ shows us for dependencies. There is no dashed arrow from the exam class to any of the subclasses. Um, that shows that the exam class is not, to use the term from chapter 8, the exam class is not coupled to either fill in question or choice question. And that's exactly what we're, what we're looking for. All right, so to complete this example, we need to actually use this exam class. Um, so let's open up question demo one. I don't know why I called it question demo one. But um, here we already had some code to um, create a question object for the fill in question and print and get some response stuff. I'm going to actually comment this out by highlighting it and going to the edit menu and choosing comment because we're going to use the exam class to ask the questions. We don't need to put that code here. I'm going to comment that out as well. And then we create a choice question as well here. So after all of this, let's use our new exam class to actually uh, create a new exam. So I'm going to create a local variable of type exam called exam with a lowercase e. And I'm going to create a new exam object and assign that reference to that variable. And then we need to add, we have two questions here. So let's add each question to this exam. So exam.addQuestion. And I specify Q. And exam.addQuestion. And I specify Q2. And, and here's, a, here's another example of the substitution principle. Here's another piece to this whole polymorphism puzzle. Um, Q, the vari local variable Q, is of type question. And the parameter to add question um, is of type question, too. So that all matches. That's nothing so unusual here. But the variable Q2 is of type choice question. And yet the parameter to the add question method is of type question. But this is OK, obviously. It still compiles. And the reason for that is the substitution principle, which means we can pass a value whose type is a choice question to a, for a parameter whose type should be question because a choice question is a question. Right? So we can substitute it wherever we could take a question. Sure, you can take a choice question instead or fill in question because a choice question is a question. So that's part of our, our polymorphism here. The actual type of these objects is not question, but we're still passing it to the add question method. Finally, let's administer the exam. Let's call the ask questions method. All right. Um, let's run this. So I'm going to run the main method because I think to really appreciate polymorphism, you have to see what this thing looks like when it runs. So I want the code up. Actually, I want the uh, this one. All right. So we're in the middle of the ask questions method. And it just printed the question text 
for the first question. The inventor of Java is blank. And so here I could type the answer. James Gosling is going to tell me that's correct. And then it's going to print another question. And it says, who founded Apple? One, Bill Gates. Two, Steve Jobs. It looks like I need a couple new lines that I forgot. If I answer Bill Gates, it's going to tell me I'm wrong. Um, what we're witnessing here, though, is polymorphism in action. Um, the polymorphic behavior is that the question class simply has a list of references to, I'm sorry, the exam class simply has a list of references to question objects. However, because those objects are actually subclasses, like fill in question and choice question, the behavior that's displayed, what we observe here, is that specialized behavior. We're seeing the two string method of the choice question class be called instead. Um, and that's what polymorphism is all about. And here's like why it's, why it's powerful. So let's pretend you're the software engineer working for this educational testing company. And you have this collection of classes that we've now written. Um, except they're like much more complicated and there's a lot more code and it's a much bigger effort to change things. And you're asked to create a new subclass of question for mathematics questions. It needs to be a numeric question. It needs to allow students to specify a numeric value and if they're within the tolerance you, you mark it as, as correct. When you go off to write this new subclass, this new numeric question subclass, there is not a single line of code in your exam class that you have to change. Because there's nothing in the exam class that's dependent upon any of the subclasses. That's the power of polymorphism, um, is that you can, at some later point in time, create this other class. In fact, even if you didn't have access to the exam class anymore, let's say it was in a different Java package written by a different company, you could still create more subclasses um, of the question class. And it would still work with this exam class that hasn't even been recompiled in years. That's the power of polymorphism. Um, so that's, that's what this example gives us a simple illustration of.